Do you want to get a job at Google? In this video, I'm going to help you do exactly that. We're going to look through the CV that I used to apply to Google two years ago, the lessons, learnings, tips and tricks that I learned from making that CV and what I would also change or use now, now that I'm a Google employee and I know a little bit more how the kind of hiring process and the recruitment process works. So without further ado, let's get straight into my CV. So let's start with the design. So with my CV, I wanted something that would really stand out from all the different applications, particularly when it got to the point in which an actual human being would look at it. If you think of most CVs, like they're just done on Microsoft Word and they're just, you know, done on like Arial or Times New Roman. I slightly designed my CV. It's actually made in Photoshop, which is far more complicated than I would actually recommend doing. But my whole CV was kind of just designed to be like professional and well designed and as kind of intuitive as I could with a, a little kind of like, you know, small touch of gold uh, in terms of the writing of my surname. So I actually, yeah, made this in Photoshop, custom for myself. Um, but I wanted something that was kind of gonna be a bit unique. I wanted it obviously to stand out, but I also wanted the sections to be super clear. So you can see I've got profile at the top, which is, a, which is the summary. I've got work experience, second, education, skills, interests. I have these kind of like just divider lines, so nice and kind of simple. I've got work experience continued, and then achievements with kind of some top achievements and things that I did. I've then also got at the bottom, so in the footer of the CV, I've got my kind of like personal details, so like name, number, email address down the bottom here. I've just blurred this out obviously to protect my identity um, in this video, but in my normal CV it would be there, and the link to my LinkedIn profile down at the bottom. So I think design wise, you know, as I say, designed to kind of stand out somewhat, showcase a little bit of design flair, but also keep things super clear and spaced out. One final point on the design is there's this kind of like big debate over whether your CV should be one page or two pages. My thought was that when Google evaluate my CV, if they just look at the first page of my CV and they never make it to the second page, that's fine. Like, I think the key thing that I would do is front load your CV at the start. Obviously, you kind of want to make it the most recent jobs that you've done at first. So obviously at the time, this was in 2018, which is the most recent role that I was doing at that time till present. So you kind of want to make it realistically in historical date order. However, you want to make sure that the key kind of achievement section brings those achievements in, the skills, interest. I even potentially nowadays would bring the achievement section up into the first page instead of having skills or interests here because the achievements are a little bit more personal and a little bit more of the things that I've done versus skills or interests that potentially anyone could put on the CV. You also notice in the footer of the CV, I have a link to my LinkedIn. And it's really important that you keep your LinkedIn up to date and make sure that it aligns with your CV. So some places you apply for, you can just import your information from LinkedIn. Google is different. You just use your CV to apply to Google. However, it is very, very likely that a recruiter or some piece of technology will look at your LinkedIn profile and probably cross-reference it against your CV. So just keep that in mind. Cool, so that covers my overall design thinking. Now let's take a look at the specific elements of the CV. So the first thing I'd like to talk about is this kind of top profile section. The reason I wanna talk about that first is basically this has to encapsulate everything about you. So this is the first thing that anyone is gonna look at when they view your CV. And in some cases, a robot is gonna look at your CV if you're applying to a tech company. Uh, I don't know if Google do this, but I know that a lot of big tech companies now just use robots to just scan through. So they'll scan through your CV and the first few words will probably be what the algorithm picks up. So this is super important. In this section here, you're gonna really wanna showcase the summary of why you are really good for a certain company. So for example, for Google, I knew that Google is obviously a massive technology company and I wanted to show that I had an interest in technology. I've got excellent leadership skills and pitching skills because the role that I was going for was more of kind of a sales and account management role. 
and also something that I'd done that was quite an achievement for the time was founding and managing a non-profit for the last two and a half years or two or so years. So that's the most important bit to start with. Keep this succinct, keep this kind of short and keep it to the key kind of achievements and points that you wanna make. The next section that doesn't really matter with Google specifically is education. So Google has become an employer that cares far less about where you went to college, where you went to university, and what you studied. And one thing that I would also probably change on this CV compared to what I had now, is when you have the education on your CV or on your LinkedIn, and you give it a date. So for example, here I put, you know, from 2015 to 2018, I went to the University of Nottingham. If you give it a date, apparently there is a theory that by giving it a date, it reduces the chance of you getting higher paid roles because people think you're less experienced because you came out of university. So I think now I would probably remove the date from actually this education just so, and, and, off, and off my LinkedIn. So kind of throw people off there. But yeah, you want to kind of list your education. If you have that, as I say, it's less relevant for Google. Let's look at the work experience section. So when you're doing the work experience section, the absolute crucial thing here is to have the role title, the name of the company, the dates in which you worked with that company. I really like, and I'm pretty sure Google recruiters like this too, is having a kind of one or two line summary at the start. So it's very, very clear what you actually did for that company. And then this next bit is critical. So when you're talking about a company that you've worked for in the past, and you put your one line sentence or two line sentence about what you've done. When you go through what you've achieved at that company, you wanna be as specific as possible with the outcomes that you've done. Ideally, what you wanna have is each job section would have a smart outcome. So it would be specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time constrained. So what you're doing here and here is you're outlining the key outcomes from what you did when you were working for that company. So for me, for example, I was midway through working for State Zero Labs at this time, which was like a really cool blockchain accelerator in London. And this was kind of midway through the time in which I was applying for Google. And in here, I'd only, you know, hadn't worked for the company for like years and years at this point. And, you know, the opportunity came to apply to Google and it was actually a really long process. So what I'd achieved for the company at that time was building the podcast, organizing the events and external communications and supporting with marketing activity across the business. This is good. What I would also do here is I would add in some numbers. So if we scroll down a little bit more on terms of the people of the street CIC. So this is a company that I set up and ran for about two years, the not-for-profit social enterprise. This is a little bit better in terms of outcomes because I actually got here, you know, the amount I actually raised through grants and crowdfunding. I've put in, you know, the successful Donate Your Dough campaign with the hashtag. So if a recruiter wants to, they can look at that hashtag and they can find more information about the campaign. I've also then put key kind of places in which the campaign's been featured. So featured on BBC News, online TV and national press. I've kind of included a little bit of more about a project that we did within People of the Streets specifically. So Stories of the Streets was just like a photography exhibition. So this kind of job summary, although it was actually uh, not, it wasn't really a job as such, but <laughs> I, was the, I was the MD and the, and the founder. But the this kind of description here is actually a lot better than the marketing associate one because I've kind of got those key outcomes. I've got a project summary. And I've also got some more statistics and, and numbers. Looking again at the second page of my CV where the kind of work experience stuff continues, you can see here I've done a reasonable job of that too. So for example, for this social media and content executive role, you can see, what did I do? Okay, I managed social media for the car film warehouse. Super simple. They know that I managed social media. What does that entail? Okay, well I planned the campaigns, I budgeted for them, and I launched the go-to-market strategies across these different platforms. What was the kind of outcome in terms of numbers? Well, we built a new strategy for Instagram and we increased the following by 300%. 300% growth. Anything else you did? Okay, yeah, you work with key influencers and agencies. So this one here and the managing director 
and co-founder. So these two positions were a good example of how I would lay out what you've done within that role, some outcomes, a project that you've worked on, and some key kind of numbers that you can kind of really represent your work. I think that's the key thing. When, no matter what company you've worked at before Google, you wanna really be able to pull out really clearly the personal contribution that you made to that team that wouldn't have happened if you hadn't have been there. So yeah, in terms of these work experience sections, the key thing is no matter what company you're coming from, just make sure that you're really succinct in laying out the work experience that you've got. Be clear on the title, the dates, the company. I really like to have in these paragraph sections. So you've got like the two, three, four key points around what I personally did when I was at those companies. One other small little hack that I also did is you see these kind of three roles here? Well, these are actually all summer internships. So I did three different summer internships at different parts of Dixon's Carphone. However, I don't mention that it's an internship. And I was thinking back at the time, like, would this be good or bad? I think if you've done an internship, it's totally okay to say that you've done an internship. The only disadvantage of saying that is internship means graduate, means college, means university. So all it basically does is if you are looking for a more senior position and you have intern on your CV, potentially having that internship on your CV might mean that they don't make you eligible for a more senior role. So that's just something to bear in mind. Well, obviously, if you're just out of university or your college and you've got internships on your belt, good on you, right? Because that is gonna do you more, uh, more benefit. Awesome. Okay, so yeah, as I say, lay out the roles super clearly, no matter what you've done, no matter for the periods in time that you've done it. I put in this one to say part-time as well because I was basically working in store selling phones and tablets and internet and things like that part-time throughout the last five or so years. So yeah, keep the work experience section as succinct as possible. If you can make this one page of work experience, that's totally fine. I don't necessarily think there's a massive advantage of having two pages. I put two pages because I wanted to show off all the relevant experience that I had for Google. And actually one thing that I also did when I was applying for this role is I made sure to include the experiences that were most relevant to that role. So there was a couple of jobs that I'd actually done before working at Google that weren't necessarily related to the role that I was gonna be applying for, so I took those out of my CV. That's totally okay to do. You wanna make sure that your CV is aligned to the role that you're applying for as much as you possibly can. And even when you're thinking about the outcomes that you did within that company you work for in the past. Okay, how does that relate to the role that you're gonna be doing now? So for example, the role that I was applying for on Google was kind of like an account manager role within the ads team. So I had to show that I had had ownership of projects. So, you know, managing social media, for example, I had ownership of the social media accounts at Carphone Warehouse. You obviously need to make sure it's true. Customer consultant at Carphone Warehouse here, right? This was the time when I was working in store. What was I doing? I was exceeding the targets that I had. I was selling different products and services. If you have relevant experience to the world you're gonna be applying for next, make sure that that is front and center in your CV, for sure. And also just relating to this point here, if we look at the first page, you know, leading on some key marketing projects, I knew that I was gonna be a marketing strategist, an account manager, winning new accounts for ugly drinks here, right? So you know, building relationships, activating opportunities. Everything in my CV was designed around relationships, was designed around account management, was designed around sales, because I knew that was the org of Google that I was gonna be going into. So I think it's worth tweaking your CV 100% for when you're applying to a specific Google role, because if you do that and you look through the job description of the Google role, look for the key requirements, the minimum requirements, the recommended requirements, and think, okay, how can I link the achievements that I've made to those key requirements? So I literally looked on the job description, every single key requirement that they laid out, I was thinking, okay, how does my CV directly correlate to this? The reason the CV is even more important at Google specifically because there's no cover letter. You can upload one if you want, but honestly, no one's gonna look at it. I wouldn't bother at all. 
The CV is so important, it has to encapsulate everything you've done. It has to be really specific as to why you're the best person for that role based on the fact that also Google are probably getting like at least a thousand CVs submitted for a role. Honestly, it's literally those kind of numbers. Cool. So next let's look at the sections aside from work experience. So the key thing with Google is work experience is definitely important for Google. And one of the criteria is like role related knowledge, but they're also looking for things like general cognitive ability. And they're also looking for things like Googliness as they call it. So in essence, what that means is they're looking for things aside from roles that you've done. So achievements or projects that you've worked on outside of work or a project that you've worked on in work and had some kind of like big outcome or big change, but something that is kind of like unique to you as a person and it definitely doesn't have to be work related. So a good way of starting off with this is looking at, you know, what kind of skills do you have and what kind of interests do you have? So the interests don't necessarily need to align to the specific role at all. And the skills I would say would need to align a little bit more to the role that you're applying for. But the key thing here is just in this little section, I'm just trying to give a little indicator to the system and to a human analyzing this, what kind of skills or unique kind of things that I have make me the ideal candidate for that role. So all the skills that I had here were everything that I had a good grasp on, definitely don't lie. So, you know, for me, it was like leadership, project management, marketing, budgeting, and these were directly related to what I roughly thought the role was going to be. And also, real hot tip for you, find someone who is going to be working in the team that you would be in, message them on LinkedIn, and who a person who works at Google, and see if they do, they'll do a call or respond to your message to find out what skills that they have or they had when they were applying to Google that they thought would help. And any other tips or tricks or thoughts they may have as well. Googlers are usually really happy to flesh it out and have a call or message. And if you can't find anyone else for the role that you're looking for, then feel free to message me and I'll do my best to get back to you. The next section is interests. So realistically, these interests can be about anything you want. This is really just to show that, you know, Google is made up of all different people from right across the world. And Google's the kind of company where they've got free food, they've got colored bikes around campus, and you've got like a gym. So, you know, work is not the be all and end all at Google, and they encourage you to be a little bit more out there and be you effectively. So realistically here, I wanted to give a little bit of an insight into me and the kind of things that I work on on the side. So like, I'm interested in technology, I'm interested in social entrepreneurship, which obviously links to the not-for-profit that I set up. I like doing some web and graphic design, startup, social media, and sustainability. And this is really good to just give an indicator to the recruiter that fundamentally, there's more to you than just the work you've done. It makes you kind of like a human, you know? The next section is achievements. And this section I would try and put on the first page of your CV compared to me where I put it on the second, if I was, if I was to update this CV now. This section is really good because it highlights what I personally achieved in the different companies or projects or activities or clubs or even societies that I was at uni, what I actually did from those and the difference that it made from me being there. So that's really crucial. With these kind of achievements, you're really just giving a little glimpse into the things that you're interested in and the kind of real big things that you've done. So if you're an intern at a startup and you change the entire marketing strategy, that would be a big achievement. Some examples of these kind of achievements would be like, if you won an award, if whilst you're at the company, you completely changed how they think about like diversity and made like a strategy for that. And maybe you kind of reinvented their marketing plan and as a result, they increased conversions by like 250%. Anything like that where you've made a significant difference or, di or a change, doesn't have to be work related though. This is where I would recommend an achievement section. So for me, it was all about the projects that I did a part of at university and on the side, the really just highlighted what made Charles Kerr the right person to work at Google. So, you know, this was the Stories of the Street project. This is the photography exhibition where he raised thousands of pounds to help homeless people and organized like a social business collaboration event. 
you know, I put in a vice chancellor's award, which is an award that I got from my university. I put in that I was the head of technology on the presentation team for Enactus, which is like a university wide thing for students to get involved with. I also put that I was the winner of an entrepreneur challenge, like an internal entrepreneur challenge, television business that I set up. And I also added here Nottingham entrepreneurs um, and when I was president and the kind of things that we achieved there. So realistically, that wants to just be a key summary of achievements where you've worked in the company or if it doesn't necessarily fit from a company, put in those achievements. So for example, if you're at university right now, and you did something cool within your society, that could be a really good achievement. So in summary, design. Make sure that your CV is the one that stands out. They're gonna be going through thousands of CVs. When they see one that looks slightly different, they're gonna look at yours. First section, make sure it's really concise and gets across the key points. With work experience, keep it concise, have like a one or two liner, put in the key outcomes, use numbers as much as you can, and give a real focus on the personal impact that you made within that company. Put dates, put titles, put company names. Include your personal information and your LinkedIn at the bottom, make sure that's all up to date. And then you can use the side section of your CV to add your skills, your interests, and your achievements. And just make sure that this really, really highlights what is unique about you as an applicant to Google and all of the great things that you've done, right? And as I say, it really doesn't have to necessarily be work-related for those bits, particularly for a company like Google. Work's important, it's not the be all and end all. Remember, look at the job description, look at the minimum requirements, look at the recommended requirements, look on Glassdoor as well, there's probably like some reviews and insight into the actual role you'll be applying for, so that might give you a little bit more of an indicator. Reach out to people on LinkedIn in the team or in the role of which the one you wanna apply for. If you can't find someone, feel free to reach out to me. Most Googlers are super happy to give feedback on your CV, jump on a call, give some insight. And if you're kind of hesitant in terms of reaching out, definitely do it. What's the worst thing that can happen? They're either gonna ignore it or they're gonna say no. So definitely do it. And specifically, if you're applying for a, like a software engineer role, speaking to a software engineer who currently works at Google now, getting feedback on your CV and your application, and also making sure that the role you're applying for, you have the relevant experience, it's gonna be like a super advantageous thing for you to do. In the description, I'll put a link to some Google careers resources, which are really helpful and really helped me. I'll also put a link to my LinkedIn and my CV, so you can have a look at that in more detail. If you've got any more questions about my Google CV or applying to Google or any kind of questions around that, drop them in the comments below. Otherwise, check out this video here, which is a day in my life of working at Google. If you're wanting to get a job there, it's good to know what it's like, right? So definitely watch that video here. Otherwise, check out this video here, which is one that YouTube recommends for you from my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome day.